If you are a U.S. firm that does tax work and is under $10 million in revenue, pay attention because this one is for you. Your firm needs tech that will do six things. Engage, intake, prep, input, deliver, and advise. But before you can pick those tools, you have to pick this tool, your practice management system. We'll speed through this. In short, headed into 2025, your tax firm should either be on TaxDome, Firm360, Canopy, Financial Sense, Carbon, or Count. That's it. There are over 40, 40 practice management systems marketing to U.S. firms now. And if you are a tax firm, you should be on one of those. But, but, but which one of those, Jason? It depends on the size of your firm and whether you do bookkeeping work. We made a tool that will give you an instant recommendation. I'll link it below. It'll actually give you my top recommendation for your firm and two secondary recommendations. And you got to start there because the features of your PM impact what you need from the rest of your tech stack. Okay, let's get into the six things you need your tech stack to do first, engage. What this used to be was simply sign this engagement letter that was this templated thing I got from my insurance carrier. But done right, these renewals? When the client re-ups each year, these are a massive opportunity. It's where you upsell them into a more premium package and cross-sell additional services that complement the ones you already provide the client with. In my firm, this is not an exaggeration, the renewal process became the single largest source of new revenue each year, with it being very common that clients would see a 20 to 50% fee bump via not just price increases, but via upselling and cross-selling, which is what makes the tech you use to engage clients so important. You crusty old template from the liability carrier, like that's not gonna get this done. Now, many practice management systems say they support this, either via simple e-signature support or a proposals feature. Admittedly, though, the versions in practice management system these, it's, it's, these days are really, really weak. And this can be a trap. It's a trap! Because a feature from your PM that's so weak that you won't use it does not solve for your firm's underlying need for that feature. Oftentimes, you'll get a half-baked feature launch from a PM, and you're like, mm, this doesn't really work for me, but I'll just wait another year because they'll make it better. And then you waste that whole year not having a solution for that. Rather than picking up something that will do it well, today. And very often that PM feature gets no more investment or still isn't where you need it to be the following year. If your PM isn't giving you what you need to re-engage clients while optimizing for upsells and selecting from multiple packages and all that, look at one of these three apps to help you. Either Ignition, Anchor, or Nula. Now the blocker here for most firms is cost. I don't want to pay for another tool. I want to stress this. Good renewal tools make you money. A lot more money than they cost. Giving three tiered proposals so premium clients can opt into the better option. There's so many ways to optimize this that will make your firm more money. We actually went deep on how to optimize this in episode 326 of my podcast, where we dug into renewal strategy. Okay, number one, that was engaged. Number two, intake. Another huge workflow opportunity for firms. This is how we collect all the info from the clients to get the tax work done. And for most firms, this remains the single biggest untapped workflow efficiency opportunity you have. The old way this was done, the old, the old paper organizer. You mail that sucker out and you see what comes back. But these days, your intake process needs to do four things. One, generate a detailed pro forma request list from last year, not a generic one. Actually uses data from the prior year return. Two, give the client an interface to submit each of those items and answer questions. Again, not in a generic way. Three, follow up with them relentlessly until they actually give you what you need. And then four, give you all that information back that they submitted in a helpful format. When you think of the volume of items you request across all of your clients, to have a system that itemized all of those things and is auto following up with all your clients until they have been provided, you know, and until they gave it back, what? Until they give you the stuff, this is a massive workflow opportunity. But what most firms do, they start with something like low effort. They send an organizer to the client that only gets like 40% of what they actually need. And it's the wrong move because when the intake process is done wrong, in my experience, your professional staff can easily burn a third of their time during busy season just hounding people for docs, figuring out what's needed, who needs to be followed up with. It is a total waste compared to your software having itemized all the bits you need for intake and automatically following up with every single client so you don't have to. Now. Here's the sad news. There's not a single practice management system today that does a good enough version of this. Yet. Maybe down the road they will, but today they don't. And I need a plan going into 2025 that isn't me, like, having my staff just hound clients directly. All the PMs now are doing boilerplate organizers with very little customizability. 
And just using this, or using it now because they say it'll be better next year, is going to cost your firm a massive amount of time in the meantime. So what do you use for intake? Listen up, going into 2025, you gotta be on one of three tools for this. Either Soroban, Safe Send Gather, or Stanford Tax. That's it. All three are using real pro forma prior year data to build a list of what's needed from each client. They then provide a modern interface for the client to submit those details. And all three are actually doing cool AI stuff now to take this process even further because intake, intake will be the first part of the tax prep process set to vastly improve due to AI. Now there are a bunch of other solutions that do a version of this. In fact, for every tech recommendation I make, there are 10 times as many tools out there that say they do this. But if I'm not recommending them, it's because they don't do it as well as the ones I'm recommending. And that's according to the hundreds of tax firms that I work with who are real users of the good ones and the bad ones. So we know what works and what doesn't work. And again, I don't take affiliates from any of these people. I will do outbound requests, ask them to sponsor my content after I recommend them, but I'm not getting paid for sending you to any of those people. Now, don't make the mistake that I did. Don't ever make buying decisions based on what landing pages or salespeople tell you. Make decisions based on what other accountants tell you. Relying on salespeople, it, it is a, a sad, sad road to lonely sadness. Okay, that was number two intake. Number three, prep. This is the organization of the work papers and, and like marking them up and referencing them, all that stuff. And this bit of the process kind of sucks right now. I expect what we'll see is this new crop of intake tool providers, the ones that I just recommended, I suspect we'll see them move forward into this part of the process, the workflow, the, the work paper management. But right now, unfortunately, for most people, this step is done in a big old pile of PDFs or a collection of PDFs. And you're throwing it in like, you know, engagement or Google Drive or something like that. Now, the best solution for this today for 1040 prep is SP Binder by SurePrep. It's the only cloud-based 1040 work paper management platform out there. And by that, I mean, it's actually designed for 1040 prep. It's not just documents in a web interface, like what the practice management systems do. Now, SP Binder, it takes some learning to get your team to be efficient with it. It's a two or three year investment. But the bigger problem is SurePrep got acquired by Thomson Reuters, which is absolutely a nail in the coffin for SurePrep. In the life cycle of a platform like this, you have a bunch of smart people that build an innovative way to solve a problem. It then gets bought by a legacy company like Thomson Reuters that does nothing innovative with their own products. Otherwise they wouldn't have to go out and buy innovative companies. All the core team leaves and the product just stays the same and usually support gets worse. We've seen this a hundred times from T-Sheets to Divi. Like that's just the cycle of software. That's how it goes. So. Where does this leave us with SurePrep today? Specifically their SP Binder work paper solution. If you're already on SP Binder, no problem. I'd hold tight and stay there. But I wouldn't recommend moving to SP Binder anymore. In the two to three year time frame it takes to get your team to be efficient with it, we're gonna have some AI enabled solutions that are not from Thomson Reuters that will be far superior. And then you're hitching your wagon to a company that's growing and innovating rather than TR, right? Who just, who just isn't. Okay, that was number three prep. Now number four. Input, this is the actual tax software you put the goods into to complete the returns. Your tax software used to be like 90% of your tax tech stack, right? That was almost the only tech we had next to lead sheets. These days, since tax software is so archaic and will not evolve, sidebar, few companies working on it in stealth, but we're still bare minimum two to three years from having a like next gen tax system. Anyways, the efficiency opportunities in tax prep right now, it's not gonna come from your tax software. It's gonna come from the workflow that surrounds your tax software, how you intake information, how you deliver returns, stuff that has nothing to do with the tax software. So if you're looking for efficiency gains, you're probably not gonna find as much from changing tax software as you will from pulling in better workflow tools. But just in short, if you're thinking tax software, there are only three that I recommend. First, Intuit Pro Connect, but two really big asterisks here. One, make sure it can handle the complexity you need in your firm. In my case, our returns were like way too complex for Pro Connect. We couldn't even use it. And then two, ask yourself if you're still okay giving Intuit more money, given that TurboTax Live is now price matching other tax pros. This is the tax Pretty wild. Now, the reason that ProConnect is still one of the three platforms I recommend is it's the only one that's truly cloud-based. Not to be confused with cloud-hosted, every other tax software is a desktop app 
that can be hosted in the cloud, whereas ProConnect is cloud native. It's a SaaS app. That's the first reason I like it. And two, it's actually got a great integration with QBO. So if you have a lot of QuickBooks Online clients, pulling the numbers in from there works pretty well. But in my case, I couldn't use it because it didn't handle complex returns well. Second recommendation is Drake, similar to ProConnect. If you're wading into more complex returns, Drake can be a little more work, a little more manual. But Drake is a great option for cost sensitive firms, early stage firms, or one of the bigger platforms could break the bank. Drake is straightforward to use, and by most accounts, they have really good support, and it just works. It's straightforward. Third recommendation is UltraTax. If you need the complexity, if you need one of the most powerful systems out there, UltraTax is the least bad of all the bad options. And again, we're talking here about firms under 10 million in revenue. You go bigger than that, and there's more of an argument for like CCH access. And I will say, if you're coming from a bigger firm and running your own smaller firm, and you already have muscle memory with something like a CCH access, that's a totally valid argument for pulling an access tax. But with UltraTax, watch out for two things. One, do not buy virtual office, Thomson Reuters hosting solution, because it's really, really bad and really expensive. You can find third-party hosting solutions that are cheaper and won't break all the time. And then two, do not let them bundle anything besides fixed assets. UltraTax fixed assets, that's all you want. They will practically give you other software for free for three years, but that doesn't make the software itself any less shit. Hear this, you should not be buying any tools from your tax software vendor besides tax software. For every tool they offer, there are vastly superior options on the market. So only buy tax software from your tax software vendors, even though they're gonna twist your arm so hard to buy other stuff like Onvio and their research products and file cabinet, etc. All right, that was four input. Now five, deliver. In the past, our tax software had built-in DMS solutions that would like print out and save the return copies in a specific format. These days we have solutions that'll take that much, much farther. The best one here by a mile is SafeSend. Basically you print the return to SafeSend and it gives the client a super streamlined way to sign the forms, make payments, follows up with them until they do so you're not sitting on 8879s all year. It'll even remind them when they have quarterly vouchers coming up after the return's done. It'll save you some time manually sending those like same emails, the delivery ones to clients where you'd like split up the PDF and all that. So there's some time savings here, but the real upside of this solution to me is that it de-skills delivery. I want my admins to deliver the returns for me. If the client still wants to hop on a call at delivery time, that's fine, but my admin can deliver the return, hound the clients for signatures, and we'll include a Calendly link in there if the client still wants to chat. But once I sign the return, somebody else can send it. Now. Practice management systems are trying to handle a bit of this return delivery. I'd say the only version today that's worthwhile of all the practice management systems is what TaxDome does. You can print returns to TaxDome. You can put the return delivery behind like paying an invoice, for example. TaxDome was one of my most recommended practice management systems for tax firms, especially small ones. Again, if you haven't yet, go through the tool linked below to get a tailored practice management system recommendation for your firm. But really TaxDome is the only PM doing a version of delivery that's worthwhile. But the last thing you need from your tech, and, and definitely not least, number six, mm -hmm. advise. The tools you use to do tax advisory work, and I've been hammering on this a lot lately, the single most profitable service you can sell in a tax firm is tax advisory services. We talk with tax firms on my podcast who are regular old like three-person firms working with small business clients, and they won't touch tax advisory work for less than like eight to 12K. Whereas most firms, you may charge like, 500 bucks for tax planning. Why is that? That two firms, largely the same, will charge wildly different amounts for something that is seemingly very similar, right? I'd say it's two things. One, not all tax advisory is made equal. If all you're doing is maxing out retirement contributions, I would argue that's not tax advisory. Now, tools can help here, can help to identify opportunities. You can even load up your own custom opportunities like saving strategies into tools. But then two, the most valuable thing these tools do, in my opinion, isn't like calculations. It's the communication of the value of that tax advisory work. They show the client tax savings and tax deferred in a format the client can actually understand. Whereas the tax planning tool from your tax software vendor, oh, it does not. Now these tools, they will roll up savings across like all your clients, entities, and personal. They'll show cumulative year over year savings that the client forgets about because you did that smart thing a couple years ago, right? And too many tax bros are still stuck on the notion that this is like contingent fees. It's not. If I can do a bit of pre-work to see how much tax we could potentially defer with some planning, and I come to the client and I say, there's probably 
20 to 40K in tax that we could defer with some strategic planning. The client's gonna pay you well to do that service, even if it's not like big numbers. This isn't contingent fees, that's framing your value through the lens of real dollars of tax the client won't have to pay this year. Now, if you say, uh, you gotta pay me 20% of all the tax I save you, that's contingent fees. Don't do that. That's not what we're doing here. And this framing helps you escape the limitations of the perceived value of preparing a tax return, which kind of has a set price at this point. Instead of just preparing someone's taxes, we want to apply strategies specific to their situation. It's completely unique to them. And that allows you to set the price wherever you want because it's a totally unique service. And I couldn't get my head around this, honest to goodness, I couldn't get my head around this until I saw proper tax planning software, not planner CS, not BNA, proper planning software that frames this in a way the client can understand. Now, my top recommendation here is Corvi. They'll help you find saving strategies and present it in a like dead simple way to your client. They do a good job of framing up the value. It is not a cheap tool, but you'll pay for it in probably the first two tax advisory engagements. Two other plans if you don't wanna go with Corvi, Tax Plan IQ and Holista Plan. There you go, the six jobs you need tech to do in your accounting firm. But it all starts with the practice management system. If you haven't yet, use that PM selector tool to get started. And happy building. It's, it's tech stack season.